Hi, it's the Whispering Light. Uh, it's been a while since I posted a video, so I thought that I would do that now. Kind of a where I've been, because it's been a little bit exciting. So, it's been about a month, um, a little bit more than that maybe, since I posted a video. So, a big, um, a big thing that took up my time was, uh, of course, school. Um, it was like finals week and we were finishing up everything. Um, there's also... Sorry, there's... Alright. <clears throat> I also spent two weeks in Europe, so that's what this video is mostly going to be about. I'm going to talk about my Europe trip and I'm going to show you some souvenirs. A lot of them are just like papers and tickets and uh, programs and stuff of stuff that I like went to. I bought a lot of candy while I was there and I have two souvenirs that are here at this house. This is my dad's house. Um, I moved back from college. I got back to my state um, about a week ago and kind of been just moving in, getting settled, looking for like some summer jobs and stuff. So um, hopefully this will probably become one of my two main recording spots. <laughs> um, it's still my room, but it's a different angle. So you've seen my room before. But hopefully you'll notice as the um, summer goes on, <laughs> hopefully the background will get a little less messy um, and a little bit more organized especially my bookshelf, which is what you can actually see. So, I have a lot of things to show you. A lot of it's candy, and then, like I said, I have two um, souvenirs that I bought that are actually here. I bought a couple things for my now ex-boyfriend, and um, they were like some cool socks. And I bought him a shot glass from Paris, so that was cool. But I don't have that anymore because I gave it to him. And I have one thing to show you, and it's actually for my brother, but I haven't given it to him yet. Um, but I'll hold off because that's from the second part of the trip. So I'm sorry if you can hear the bed creaking underneath me. I'm kind of kneeling right now. So first, I guess I'll tell you, I went to England for about a week. And that was for a study abroad program that I did with my class from school. And the class was online. It went throughout the entire semester, but on the last day of school, it was actually a couple hours after my last final, we all boarded a plane and took a red eye to London. So when we got there, our first thing was that we went to Oxford for two days. And in Oxford, we saw a lot of really pretty buildings, and we went to Blenheim Palace, which is where the uh, Dukes of Marlborough, and I know I mumbled that because I don't really know how to pronounce that, and uh, Winston Churchill lived. So I went to visit that, and the palace was just beautiful, and the gardens were gorgeous. The overall, when I was in London, of course, the weather was not the greatest. It was overcast and rainy and cold, so, but I still had a really great time. I have a lot of, uh, um, tickets and stuff, so I'll, those might not be in order, but, <laughs> um, we also went to Christchurch. So the, um, the trip was a, it's called the Harry Potter experience. So we went and we visited a lot of the places that Harry Potter was, uh, a lot of places that inspired places in Harry Potter or places that Harry Potter was filmed at. So that was really cool. And I have pictures that I might uh, do in another video or throw in at the end of this video. Uh, but I'll probably make a separate video and have like a voiceover so that I can tell you about each picture. Uh, then after Oxford, we stayed in London for the rest of the week. And then when my class left London, they flew back to the US. And then I took a train to Paris because my cousin lives in Paris. And I stayed with her for about a week. So that was really cool too. She was working for the whole week, so I did some sightseeing by myself. So I'm just going to kind of go through everything that I have, and then I will uh, talk a little bit about it, a little bit. 
but I just really wanted to let you guys know where I've been and just kind of share with you my experience over there. So first, I guess I will do all of the little papers and stuff that I have. So first, so these aren't going to go in order, but um, I went to the Warner Brothers studio for Harry Potter. This is my ticket. And you'll see a lot more of this in my pictures video, but basically if you haven't been to the Warner Brothers studio or haven't heard of it or don't know what it is, it is um, all of the, uh, a lot of the places that Harry Potter, uh, a lot of the sets that Harry Potter was actually filmed at. So I know that there's like a rebuilding of the castle in like Orlando, Florida and other places I think. I haven't been to those. I've been on the outside and so I've seen it, but um, I haven't been inside any of those, but the Warner Brothers studio is just a studio, but then the sets are in there. So you'll see in pictures, but like I was in the Great Hall and the potions classroom and the Gryffindor common room and just stuff like that. It was really cool. So, but this was my ticket. And then on here it's like the Hogwarts Express train wheel and there was like a Hogwarts Express area there of course and they had us like running through the wall. They had um, one of the trolleys halfway into the wall so they just like made half of a cart and stuck it up against the wall so it looked like you're going through. So that's cool. So that was that. I'm going to try to separate all of the Paris stuff so that it's not like jumping around too much, just kind of jumping around with days, not countries, but, uh, okay. This is my ticket to see Romeo and Juliet. We went to the Globe Theater. This was crazy. We went to the Globe Theater and we watched Romeo and Juliet. This is my ticket from that. And the play itself was so different than anything I'd ever seen before. Because I think we were all expecting something more traditional, like a traditional Romeo and Juliet. This was... It was incredible, but it was also, like, insane. They came out and all of their faces were painted, um, like, clown faces. So they had, like, this clown, like, white with, um... I don't know what you would assume a clown would have, I guess. Um, they were all dressed in black, every single character. Whenever there was a fight scene, or any kind of combat, they would drop the bass and they would have just a bunch of dubstep music playing. And there was some, it was like a song, they added a song, and the ending was different. They changed it up so much and they made it like a lot more modern, but it was really cool. So, there was that. It honestly felt like it was directed by Bo Burnham. If uh, those of you who know who that is, like that's, it honestly felt like one of his shows, except Romeo and Juliet, if that makes sense. So that was really fun. Um, well, this is my boarding pass, but it's got some personal information on it, so I'm not going to share it with you, but um, it was my boarding pass for the plane. And then, oh, this is kind of beat up. That sucks. Let's see. Also, when I went to the Warner Brothers studio, they passed out this passport book for the Harry Potter thing. So, in it, I'll show you. I haven't written anything in it. I've just gotten the stamps, but, like, you put your name and stuff. And then, there are, like, little golden snitches hidden throughout the studio, but there are just different places that you go to and you, uh, there's like a stamp center, like they don't, um, it's really just an imprint, they don't have, uh, ink or anything. So I'll see if it shows up, but like this is the Gryffindor area, and this was like, this stamp, I don't know if you could, there you go, like kind of, with the, uh, with the light, it makes it easier. But this, it's just the Gryffindor crest, and it was in the Gryffindor common room area. This, it's a golden snitch. I don't know if you can make it out. 
but that was in the Quidditch area. They had like these brooms set up with a green screen background, and you could like ride it and you can buy a video of yourself like riding a broom and it takes you like around Hogwarts and stuff, so that was kind of cool. I didn't do it, but there was like a Death Eater exhibit with different. I don't know if you can see, that's the dark mark. Um, but there was a bunch of costumes. I took a picture of Bellatrix's hair <laughs> because that's my favorite character and her hair was like so pretty. Um, it was obviously a wig, but uh, <laughs> it was really cool to see because it was like the actual wig that she wore for the movies. And then there was Platform 9 and 3 quarters, which I mentioned. You can see it a little bit better, but it's uh, the 9 and 3 quarters. And there was um, Gringotts, which was around Diagon Alley, because they had that all set up. And then finally there was a, you'll see, again, you'll see it in my pictures, but there was a whole castle uh, model. Obviously it was not a real, like, not like the um, one in Orlando. Like, not that big, but it was the entire castle, and it's what they used for all of the outside shots. So, that was the passport book that they gave us, and that was really cool. So now I have this as a souvenir also. Oh, this was just... Oh, this one's... What, what is this? This was my train ticket. Um, we're not moving to Paris yet, but this was my train ticket from... Uh, no, it doesn't have my name on it. Um, this was my train ticket from London to Paris. I took the Eurostar. It went really fast, but it was really cool. Uh, I've never really been on a train like that before. I've been on, like, old trains. Um, there's this one old train that goes from, like... Uh, I used to take trips to Phoenix, Arizona all the time. And there's, like, this one really old train that goes from somewhere to the Grand Canyon. And I took that twice, uh, but it was a little different actually taking a train from London to Paris because it's like modern, it's like how it actually works, you know, it's not like a novelty or anything. It's like a real method of transportation, not a ride, <laughs> essentially. Um, but that was this, and that was really cool. Um, let's see. I have this bag that's also full of a lot of different things that I got there. Let me see. I'm just going to empty it out, I think. That was heavier than I expected. Alright, let's just see. So this bag, I don't know where I got it. I think I got it at Christchurch. It makes really nice sounds though. I just figured that it would be like a shame to show all of you, like show you all this cool stuff, and then not play with the bag for a little bit. So I'll set that over here, and then I got this postcard from Oxford, which is like my new collection every city, and every major city I go to, uh, by myself, <laughs> um, or essentially without my parents, <laughs> I get a postcard, and on the back, I'm not gonna show it to you because it's got some stuff on it, but I say my full name, the dates I was there, the reason I went, where I stayed, which I stayed at the Sherwell Guest House, and I would highly recommend it, it's really cozy, and I uh, the highlights of that trip. So I put the highlights, Christchurch, we went to Bee Feeders, and we had like this apple pie, and it was amazing. It was so good. And then we went to the Bodleian Library also. So I got this postcard, and that's what I write on the back so that I know where to go back to <laughs> if I ever end up going back. So it's got, let's see, I don't know where that is, we didn't go there. 
just like different areas. I think this was the entrance, one of the entrances to the Bodleian. Maybe. Don't correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's just a lot of places. I think that Blenheim Palace might be one of these. A lot of them are skylines, and just the architecture overall. And the architecture was gorgeous, like, I'm from the States. <laughs> I've never left the States. Um, and I'm in a suburban area, so it's not like I see this kind of castle-like, incredible architecture all the time. So it really blew me away. <laughs> <clears throat> I did another one for London. <clears throat> this is the Tower Bridge, and I went to the Tower of London. The Tower of London, you'll see more pictures. But that was like one of my favorite places in London that we went to. So on the back, I wrote... Um, we stayed at the Generator Hostel, which is also really... I really recommend that. And then my highlights were the Tower of London, St. Paul's Cathedral, which was incredible and Scoff and Banter, which is like this really fancy restaurant that we went to on the last night of the trip. So that's what this was. It was really cool. Um, this was my baggage strip, but I'm not going to show it to you either because it's got my name on it. And then my teacher, she wrote us this little card, so I'm not going to... Oh, it's ripped. Darn. But, um... She sent us, like, this little card on the last day, and in it, she made a little Harry Potter keychain. I'm going to show it to you. I'm just covering my name up at the top, because she made it for all of us. But, um, it's a little Harry Potter guy, and it's got the British flag in the background, and it says Harry Potter Experience 2017, so it's like a little commemorative keychain for us and she like drew it all herself and she made an individual one for everyone because it's got our name at the top so it was really nice and it's so cute I love it um and then this was the little pamphlet for Christchurch in Oxford so um this was a really cool spot and I'm gonna show you Again, I took a lot of pictures, but I wanted to show you some parts where Harry Potter was filmed, and they have, like, those pictures in the uh, program. So, if you could see there, that field, um, I took a better picture of it, and that will be in my other video, but basically that's where Harry Potter learned how to fly for the first time. And then, this... Um, all of you Harry Potter fans might recognize was like the staircase that they went up uh, when they first came to Hogwarts and that one staircase that was in um, that one part where Harry got sucked into the Tom Riddle's diary and when uh, there was like someone was petrified or killed and Tom Riddle was talking to Dumbledore up at the top and Harry Potter was listening from like down here. That's where this was filmed. And then this is the great hall that they have at Christchurch, um, where people, where the students actually eat. And it's not, it wasn't filmed, it wasn't in the films, but it uh, inspired how they did the great hall in the films. So that was really cool. And this is my pamphlet from Christchurch, so I have that as well. <laughs> um, let's see... Blenheim Palace. That's my ticket there. And there's not really much to say about Blenheim Palace um, that I won't say in the picture video. But this is my ticket and it was really beautiful. It was. This was our first day so I hadn't been to a palace before. <laughs> not, not like this anyway. And we got a tour and there were, you'll see, but just big rooms filled with portraits of these people who lived there. <laughs> So that was my ticket. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the, before I move on to the little papers and tickets and stuff that I got from Paris, I'm going to show you the stuff that I got from London itself. So first, I, in Oxford, went to this place, it was called Hotel Chocolate, um, and I got a bunch of different chocolates, so this one 
I don't know if you can see, a lot of these little things are empty, but there's one here. And there's a couple right here, and then most of them are down here, so you can't really see them. But this was black currant chocolate. I don't know if any of you remember this, but a couple yum boxes ago, I got really, really good black currant candy. And I loved it, and I looked online to see if I could buy more. And I couldn't find that again, but... I thought that this would be really good because it's like the same flavor, but it's with chocolate also. And it's good if you can get past the oh, the idea that it's supposed to be chocolate because it really doesn't taste like chocolate. It's just very sour. I like it though. It's tasty. Then there is butterscotch chocolate, which it just tastes like caramel filled chocolate. Caramel filled chocolate. It doesn't really taste different than that even though it's butterscotch and stuff, but it's pretty good. I like this. This is probably my favorite. Um, because it actually tastes like chocolate. You know, this one's really bad. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't care for this one at all, but it's lemon caramel, caramel, and there are four missing, and I have only had two. I got my ex-boyfriend and my one friend, Joanne, to try, to try them. And I think my ex liked it, but my friend did not, and neither did I. Um, it was just not good. It's lemon and caramel, and those two flavors don't really go together. So, um, there was, I got some more chocolate. I got some more candy from the Warner Brothers studio, and they're like Harry Potter candy. So, I got fudge flies. <laughs> So I'll take one out and show you, so I'm not really hungry right now, so I'm not going to eat it. I just wanted you to see, because this is a little different than like, it's not the Birdie Bots Every Flavored Beans or anything like that, so it's a little bit different. It is kind of shaped like a fly, if you can make it out. And it essentially tastes like a crunch bar, like it's got the little Rice Krispies in it and everything, and, but it's shaped like a fly. But they're really good. They're tasty. They're just kind of, um, basic. So I haven't had many. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, I forgot. So, it says on the back, Best Before 3-11-2017. And I bought this at the beginning of May, May 1st. So in my mind, I'm like, that's nice that they would have this on the shelves when it was, when it expired two months ago. But um, for those of you who don't know, which I didn't when I went to London, they did, they do um, months and days switched from the U.S. So it's actually um, November 3rd when that would be uh, expired. But yeah, I had no idea. It was kind of cool though. And then I also... Sorry, my knees are hurting, so I have to kind of like... Be mindful. Um, I also got this, and I haven't had any of this because I'm kind of hesitant. Because I'm not really sure if I'm going to like the consistency of everything in here. But they're like little gummies, and some of them are coated with sugar. Some of them are not. Some of them have like a creamy filling, and some of them don't. So this will be interesting to try, just kind of like an assorted variety. But I also thought it would be cool to like maybe do a whole video dedicated to this candy. There's so many different ones. There are like so many different kinds of candies in here. Uh, so it might be interesting to do a full video with these. And then I also got um, this honeycomb candy. Excuse me. But it's essentially, it's really strange, and it's good, um, but it's really sugary, so you can only eat, like, I can only eat, like, two or three at a time, because it's just so rich um, in sugar, and it's like this, I really can't describe it, it's just honeycomb <laughs> covered in chocolate, so it's like this honey chocolate, I don't know, it's good though.
off maybe one time. I'll try one of these for you too so you guys can see the inside. That's not on the picture. The picture does a pretty good explanation actually, but if you were to see the real thing, especially in video, I think it would be better. Hi, sorry, I had to move. My knees are killing me. But um, now you can see how messy my room in the background is, and hopefully you'll see that starting to get neater and neater as the summer goes on. Um, so I am sorry about the mess in the background, but I couldn't kneel anymore. But you're actually in the same spot. You're just tilted down, so that's interesting, I guess. Uh, so I'll show you some more stuff. That's... Oh, well, I don't have any more food to show you, but uh, this came when I bought, I bought a chocolate frog, and it's different, so I've seen chocolate frogs at, like, Barnes & Noble, but they're, um, so, I'm so sorry, this is, but it's a funny story, so I'm gonna share. So, I'm looking in my monitor, and it's saying that there's a face, like, over here, so it's kind of creepy, whenever that happens, uh, but I bought a chocolate frog. And the ones at Barnes & Noble are like Rice Krispies and they're like really small, but this was like an actual big chocolate frog in a uh, actual chocolate frog box like from the movies and it came with a big wizard card too. I ate the chocolate frog so I can't show that to you and the box just took up too much space. So I got Godric Gryffindor. Oh yeah, my monitor's like picking up his face. Good. Um, yeah, that's cool. And the back says, Godric Gryffindor, medieval, precise states unknown, one of the four famous founders of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Godric Gryffindor was the most accomplished dueler of his time, an enlightened, an enlightened fighter against muggle discrimination, and the first owner of the celebrated sorting hat. He was born in the West County country, village of Godric's Hollow. So that was cool and I got that. Then I got a pen. Um, it was kind of, it was like one pound, and I needed it to write with, but it ran out of ink really quick, so it's now kind of just a pen I got from London, and it's got, I'll show you, it's got the flag, and what's that, Buckingham Palace on it. Um, Big Ben, one of the guards, and then I thought it also had, no, oh, it has Tower Bridge right here. Yeah, that's it. So, just a couple, like, different areas that you should see when you're in London, I guess. <laughs> but that's, this is the pen I got. And then, speaking of pounds, I got, um, this is just leftover, but I wanted to share it with you because it's kind of cool. So it's a two pound coin, two euro coin. This was from France. Good. Um, well, this was a two euro coin. We're about to switch over to France anyways, that's fine. Um, for pounds, I probably have, I probably have more. Let me see for a second. Sorry, and then, oh, there's another thing I don't want to forget about to show you from the Warner Brothers studio. So let's see. Two euro. Okay. Well, this is from London anyway. It's a 10 pence coin. And it's got. I'll show you the back of it, but I'm trying to. I think that's a lion on the back. Those two lions. It says 10 pence up at the top. And then it has Queen Elizabeth, I think. Sorry that I don't know that for sure. It's got Queen Elizabeth right there. And 10 pence, it's like cents for those of you who just don't, I didn't know before this trip, so <laughs> that's why I'm sharing you 
or sharing with you um, like this information because I was not aware that 10 pence is just like cents for us and then pounds are essentially dollars and the exchange rate is almost one to one but it's a little bit against us uh, or me a little bit against me um, when I went over there because I think pounds are just a little bit more expensive than US dollars so there's that and then the other coins are um, euros and I can show that to you because that was from France then I got this cute little bracelet and I really like these little charm bracelets I decided that's gonna be another uh, collection I'm gonna get a charm bracelet from every country I didn't get one from Paris uh, but I'm gonna have to find one next time I go or order one online I don't wanna like cheat but it's because like I know I've been there and it's like for the memories you know but I bought this there and it's just a charm bracelet and it's got the Big Ben got a pearl. I don't really know what that stands for. It's got a heart with the British flag. It has a double decker bus. It has a crown. And a telephone booth. And just a gem. <laughs> and I think that might stand for like the crown jewels of the Tower of London, but I'm not really sure pearls could be anything um so I mean if you know what the pearl stands for like tell me in the comments because I'm actually really curious and also if I'm not correct about the little jewel at the end also let me know if you know but this was my charm bracelet and I love it it's super cute and then to grab it quietly where is it oh it's under but for those of you I th think I don't think I ever posted this video but in the future I'm going to be posting a wand video because I have so many different wands from Harry Potter and when I went to the Warner Brothers studio I saw a bunch of wands that I already had so like Harry Potter, Ron, Hermione, Bellatrix, Voldemort, Dumbledore, uh, Snape, Sirius, like all of them I already have theirs so, and the ones that I don't, like I don't have Draco's wand, and I don't have McGonagall's wand, and of course I want to, but I've seen those online for really cheap. So my teacher told me to get like one of the most obscure wands I could find, so I ended up getting Pavardi Patil's wand, and I don't have Padma's, uh, Padme? No. I'm getting Harry Potter and Star Wars confused. Um... Maybe. I don't know anything about Star Wars. Don't, like. But I got Povarty Patil's. And there was also Xenophilius at Love Goods. Um, so I almost got his too. <laughs> but I couldn't get both. And I wanted. To, I guess I. I don't know why I chose Povarty's over Xenophilius's. But this is what Povarty's looks like. And it's super pretty. It's like a. Almost like a dragon wing. Or a, um, a bat wing, like wrapped around the handle, and the rest is just like a smooth wood. But it's a, uh, it's really cool. And then it's got, if you look really close, it's got little nails or little claws. And then this one is one of like the less nice ones to hold um because I'm just unsure about it Voldemort's um Voldemort's is one of the easiest to hold I think I'm looking Voldemort's Ron, or Ron, Ron's okay Ginny's is easy to hold sorry they're all right but they're like buried under each other sorry this is like Dumbledore, or this is Voldemort's. <laughs> this is Dumbledore's wand. Um, and it's just like really easy because it's got like this little hook at the bottom for like to rest your hand on, I guess. And it's got like this little area that like clearly goes between two of your fingers. 
it's got this area where you can rest your thumb there's just so much about this wand handle that's perfect for holding but for Snape's is terrible to hold because this is like I'll show you eventually but this is like a um, square <laughs> which is not easy to hold but hers is weird because like you can find it you could find where your fingers are supposed to be but they're like bent down so it's like hard to I mean you can obviously like point it but it's just it's not natural so whenever I get a new wand I always like pay attention to that but it's really pretty it's just beautiful how it is sorry that's the phone ringing but we don't have like an abrasive ring anymore so I'm probably not gonna cut that out and I hope that you don't mind okay well um, I hope that you don't mind that I leave that in but it's just not that loud anymore and I know from experience with my camera that it's probably not it's probably barely even picking it up so but that's my one that I wanted to show you and then we'll go right over to Paris um, I will do my papers first so I went to at one point the George Pompidou Museum and that's my ticket from that it was like $14 to We saw some cool exhibits. There was a photography exhibit that we went to see, and the George Pompidou Museum is a contemporary art museum. And I didn't take very many pictures at this place, so I'll just tell you about it now. Um, there were different exhibits that were contemporary art, so um, not necessarily something that everyone would think of as art. Um, let me think. For the photography, I didn't care for the photography very much, but it was basically just pictures of people and uh, like advertisements from a certain era, I guess. I think it was like in the, it seemed like it was the 50s, 60s that time. Um, so just like black and white pictures that were kind of like that. And then there was like a whole exhibit or not a whole exhibit, but there was a whole room dedicated to um, different optical illusions, and that was really cool. The way that the outside of the museum was set up was, it looked like, uh, you know how in the inside of buildings they have piping and scaffolding, and you can just see the wiring and everything that the walls are there to hide. That was on the outside of the museum, so you could see all of like, the tubes and the pipes and the different metal, uh, like what goes inside of walls, but there were no walls, so you could just see like, there was like inside walls and like to keep everything safe and like running smoothly, but everything that the building normally tries to hide was on the outside, and I thought that was really so that was the George Pompidou Museum. This has turned from like an actual recording to just like a casual conversation. Um, which I think is funny. Then I went to the Louvre. Uh, which is the museum. So this is something that I knew, but I knew it because I took a French class. But the Louvre is at the museum that has the... Uh, the big pyramid outside, like the big glass pyramid, and the original Mona Lisa. So I got to see that, and that was awesome. That was really cool. And this is my uh, ticket from that. And that to get in was about 14 euros for me, I think. 15 euros, it's right at the back. <laughs> I couldn't find it. So 15 euros for me. Um, which was about 18 dollars so and I spent like a whole day there so it was, it was good. so that was my ticket from the Louvre when I went there I wasn't in the best of moods cuz don't make fun of me but I got swindled out of $30 right in front of the Louvre and I've been to New York City so like I know these rules that you're not supposed to communicate with like people who come up to you with clipboards or people who come up like asking for money I know you're not supposed to talk to them but I did <laughs> 
I just forgot. Um, and I got sold a lot of $30, so, or 30 euros, which would be more than $30, so that sucked. Uh, <laughs> and then earlier that day, which could have easily been why I wasn't thinking straight, this guy on the subway, this 15 year old kid, essentially like molested me because he was trying to, I think he was trying to like get money out of my pockets, but he was like grabbing my butt and my chest area. So that was not awesome. Uh, but that like really freaked me out. And that was like my first time in Paris by myself that it happened. Like I walked out of my cousin's apartment and it happened almost immediately. So it was like, welcome. <laughs> but the rest of the week went fine. We went to, I went to, <laughs> the famous opera house, and I don't want to say anything for sure, but there are two big opera houses in Paris, and the opera house in Phantom of the Opera was not also in Paris, and I think that I went to the place where it was based off of, and I'm not really sure about that, and I've been meaning to look it up, but I keep forgetting, so. It might be, or it might not be, um, it might be a fictional place, but this was really pretty, and the ticket doesn't, the ticket shows, like, easily the most beautiful room, but I am gonna have to show you better pictures from what I took on the trip, and there was also, they don't show, like, anything of the museum, but the museum is so, so cool, I mean, it, it's a opera house, not necessarily a museum, but like they have different things that you can see set up. Like they have, uh, they have old costumes from different operas and different ballets that you could see, and those were like in display cases. And there was like a library that had the scores of a bunch of different operas. Like I looked for a couple that I knew, and I couldn't find them, but the library was just so big that I'm sure they're in there, and I'm sure I just couldn't. Um, especially since one of the operas that I was looking for was by Puccini, and he's like really famous. <laughs> so, I assume that it would be there, but it's also a shorter opera, so I'm not sure. But there was just so much to see, and it was really, really cool inside the opera house. And then, this is just... It's kind of, it makes good sounds, but this was just my map that my grandma... My grandma went to France a couple of years ago. And she had this map left over, but it was like ripped, so it only showed part of it. So I didn't know, like I missed a bunch of stuff. I mean, I didn't miss it, Event like eventually I got to see everything. But when I went to see, I'll show you. I went to see the Eiffel Tower down here, I don't know if you can see. And then I crossed the bridge and I went to the Arc de Triomphe here. And then I walked all the way down the... Uh, Champs Elysees, and I went to the Place de Concorde. But right past the Place de Concorde was the Tuileries Garden, and I totally missed that on the day that I went to go see the Eiffel Tower. I had to go back um, and try again, like later in the week, in the Tuileries Garden was beautiful when I eventually got to see it. But so it would have been helpful if the map wasn't ripped, but it was still really helpful. And then here's the uh, parrot. This is the one that was all, um, I don't know what I did to it, but it's kind of uh, wrinkled a little bit. But this is my Paris postcard. And I stayed at my cousin's apartment. And the highlights were the Eiffel Tower and Berthillon ice cream. And I haven't added, there were some more things that I want to add, like the Tuileries Gardens, but I just, I haven't done that yet. And then I got from Paris, so this is so touristy and I hated myself for doing this, but my brother, who is nine years old, he's about to turn ten, he came up to me and he's like, I really want a miniature Eiffel Tower. And I told him several times, I'm like, you know that I can get that online for, these were online for 89 cents, guys. Like. If you don't shop on Wish, you need to, but this size, 
is on wish.com for literally 89 cents. I didn't buy it for a lot, like this was like 5 euros, but I could have gotten it for like 1 US dollar. But he's like, I just really want an Eiffel Tower from Paris, so I bought him a, a miniature Eiffel Tower. And it's just so touristy, but at least he'll always remember when I went, I guess. But it is kind of cool. I just, I hate that I could have gotten it for super cheap, and I hate that, like, I was the person that bought a, a miniature Eiffel Tower from the Eiffel Tower. Um, but this is what it looks like. It's all metal. It's cheap. Um, but the Eiffel Tower itself... This is going to sound really cheesy, really cheesy, but when I went to see the Eiffel Tower, I came out of the subway near the, oh, what is it even called? I'm consulting the map still, I'm not even over there anymore. The, uh, Shalo? Shalo? Palais de Shalo? I don't know how to pronounce it. But a building, essentially, is where I came out. And then when I uh, walked around the building, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see the Eiffel Tower at all. And then I walked around the building and it was just there. And it was like, boom. And it was so breathtaking. And I actually felt tears welling up in my eyes, which was ridiculous. It was so so cheesy but it happened and there's like fuzz inside of it i don't know if you could see probably not but like all the way up here there's like a fuzz and it really bothers me but yeah so that's my miniature rifle tower And then, I tried to show you already, but I will show you again, the 2 euro coin. And it's really cool. And this is like, the way that they do things over there is they, um, they have paper money. I don't have any more of that because I didn't want to save it because I, I wouldn't use it. Um, like, I'm not planning going, on going back for a really long time. And when I do go back, the odds of me even remembering that I had paper money left over is, like, not very good. So I didn't save any paper money. I tried to spend it all. And the stuff that I didn't spend, especially in terms of euros, uh, I just gave to my cousin. It's like, here, take them. I'm not going to use them. And I'm not going to exchange them back. That's just... It's too much effort for, like, ten bucks. Or ten, uh... Probably ten bucks. Um, but, like, ten euros. Um... So I just, I don't have any paper money to show you, but they also had like bigger values, bigger coin values in, uh, or bigger monetary values in coins. So they had, like this coin is good for two euros. And I, I'd actually, there was this one, um, bakery right nearby the apartment and I went in and I bought like a baguette a croissant and then a chocolate croissant and I paid for it all with like one one of these coins because like this is two euro it's, it's just it blows me away that there's like that was a in terms of culture shock <laughs> but no seriously it's just, I think that it's cool that they have coins for bigger values so I also have that and then I think that that's all but I did want to share with you uh, my stuff that I got from here, and I wanted to let you know where I've been and also tell you that I am back home for the summer, so hopefully my recordings will get, uh, will increase in quantity and will become more regular. Like, I've been saying that they'll become, I know that I make a lot of excuses for my channel, um, but I do have a lot of really cool ideas for the summer and I got a lot of more, a lot more time to execute those ideas and a lot more privacy also. I don't have roommates or anything. Also, uh, now that I am not with my boyfriend anymore, uh, I have more time also because that was another thing that took up a lot of my time last semester is I would just always be with him. So 
fingers crossed that that I'll actually stick to the schedule I'm set setting for myself for this channel, but I shouldn't really ever go away for an entire month again. That was kind of a... It, in reality, it might happen next next spring, because finals week is bad, especially when it's like also move out week. But I also shouldn't be sacrificing two weeks to go to Europe again. That was kind of like a one-time thing. I am planning on going to Ireland next spring, but it's earlier in the spring, so it's not all going to come at the same time. So hopefully, um, that there's, hopefully, I can't speak, hopefully there's not that big of a hiatus again. So I am sorry about that, but, um, thank you for being understanding, <laughs> and I hope to see you again in the next video.